These were always sort of a dream wheel of mine, and when the opportunity to pick up a set came up, I jumped on it. Despite not having a 4 stud car, I pretty much couldn't let this slip. The seller had them up for 300 pounds, or around 220 USD. Although these are typically pretty cheap wheels, especially in this condition and spec, it was still quite a steal. I've always been a fan of these wheels, and conveniently enough they fit both the EG Civic and Miata quite well, and I plan on getting one of the two in the near future. And although they were pretty beat up, worst case scenario I thought I would buy them, keep them on ice until then, or just restore them for fun and sell them off to a friend. The seller item up is just 4x114 wheels, and didn't seem to know what they were besides being 3-piece and a horrible shade of purple and black spray paint. Thankfully I was able to see through it, and went over to check them out in person. Looking at the back of the face, I found out they were 15x7, plus 0, and plus 19. Although a little bit of a weird spec, they would probably fit okay on both the cars I wanted them to go on. So I took them home, only to find out they were pretty much perfect specs for an EG. Nice little coincidence. I didn't think much of it, and just sort of let them sit in my garage for a few weeks. Although having somewhat niche wheels is pretty cool, I quickly figured out the downside. Finding out what they look like is pretty much impossible without wasting years of your life digging through pictures on the internet. I pretty much only find pictures of Miatas and this one EG, so I just left the research for another day. Well, eventually I decided to start hunting again. I wanted to try and see if I could find a picture of these on an 86. I've seen it before, but again, since these wheels are pretty cheap, they usually end up looking something like this. So I pretty much just looked up Presidio Demon Camper AE86, and as expected, I found Demon Campers, and I found AE86s, but not the combination of the two. But I just thought I would click around on some sites and maybe see if there was something out there. That's when I found this image, the one that started this whole video. Seems like a normal enough image, right? Just the usual white EG that you get when you look up the name of the wheels. Well, there was one aspect of this that made me stop for a second. The license plate. It's actually from my province of Manitoba. And I thought to myself, what are the chances that this car is actually this car, and these wheels are actually these wheels? They're the same spec. It, it can't be, right? Yeah, well, it actually isn't. I had a good 30 seconds of bliss thinking I discovered this crazy story where these wheels in Australia were my wheels traveling across the world being painted fucking purple by an idiot with a 240SX. But if you can manage to use your brains for two seconds, it's pretty obvious that these two white EGs are not the same car. This one is right-hand drive, this one's left-hand drive. And not to mention that the dates of both photos don't even remotely line up. But this was the starting point. I had a car with seemingly the exact same spec wheels in the same city. What are the odds that there are two 15 by seven, zero, and plus 19 Presidio Demon Campers in one area? So I started the dig to try and see if my set of wheels are actually the ones in this photo and potentially find more pictures of the car. The earliest known posting of this image was from 2013 on a blog named Bojangles Photo Blog with a photo bucket watermark, making this most likely from some forum, alongside another from an Australian 86 group without it, making this image most likely from some sort of small site before or in 2013. Unfortunately, reverse image searching and just plain old grinding and looking up random shit led me no closer to finding the original source. My only chances of figuring this out was to dive all the way back into the depths of the local car sites and Instagram pages and crossing my fingers. There was really only one group that I knew of that was around at the time, the now defunct top tier imports, having a site, forum, and Instagram page. I thought the best place to start would be the Instagram page, scrolling all the way back, looking through every EG and EG owners page. Searching all the way back, I couldn't find it, and looking through other Honda owners pages didn't work out too well either. I planned on looking at other Honda owners pages in hopes that I would find it or see it in the background, but no. The reality of it is that most owners have either moved on or changed handles, and the further I looked back, the more and more dead ends I found. 
This left me with just the site and forum as my only hope. This is where I thought the story would end. The site and our only local forum were deleted. No archive to speak of. The site had been totally nuked. It really irked me to find this. Why do people totally kill off any archive of old car culture and insight into the past for no real reason? I don't know. But this was the crossroads of this adventure. Do I give up now that all my leads have gone dry, or do I keep digging? I chose the latter. My only real course of action was just looking up search terms relating to what I was looking for in Honda groups. Things like Manitoba EG, Manitoba Demon Camber, etc, etc, to no real avail. This led me to just grinding it out, just looking up my city, clicking every link, every thread, and hoping for the best. The downside of this was obviously spending hours and hours clicking on links that led nowhere. Though tedious, I did get to see some cool builds from over a decade ago. It really made me wonder, what happened to all these cars over the years? Where did they go? Where did they end up? I eventually stumbled on an odd site, liquidpixel.ca, which was a photography blog from the late 2000s. Although it seemed promising at first, I quickly realized this was a dead end. An interesting side note, full of some notable stuff, but yet another dead end nevertheless. The scrolling continued, but with my newly devised strategy, I would find people in the area looking through all of their post history and praying. It might have taken me hours, but after a while of scrolling, I found this. It's not exactly what I was looking for, but I figured this was about as deep as I was willing to go. In all likelihood, this is the car. Not with the wheels I was looking for, but it was likely the car I was looking for. This is the unfortunate reality of these internet mysteries, so to speak. They don't all have happy endings. My only outlets now would be either asking the person who owned this car, or someone who likely would have been around it at some point. But I really don't want to go harassing some guys about a set of wheels that they may or may not have owned a decade ago. Hopefully there will be a part two. Even if not, I'm really happy I found this picture. Knowing that the set of wheels I have today is likely one of the sets that made me want them in the first place is pretty neat. I remember showing my friend Kian this exact image one day when we were talking about which wheels would look good on his car. At the very least, I had a good time going on a bit of a deep dive through our local Honda scene. It's safe to assume that these wheels are the wheels I now have in my garage. Whether I find the previous owner or not, at least I have somewhat of an interesting story to tell. Thanks for watching.